We're here today doing an Elka shock install on this uh, Arctic Cat ZR600. Uh, one of the first steps we do when we're about to do a ski shock install is measure the ride height. Uh, I've just put a piece of tape here on the bumper with a pen line on it and then I'll measure that down. Um, and, and so we've got a starting point. Quite often when we're doing a shock install package, we don't want to reinvent the wheel. We want to just show the customer or the end user the quality of the shock package they're getting. Sometimes we do want to make a correction to the snowmobile if it's, if it's nose high or if it's real low or the, the center skid shock is set improperly. We will fix that during the install, but this is a brand new machine. So right now we're going to just take some base numbers with the OEM shock and, and replicate that with the preload on the Elka shock absorbers. Up front here we've put a, a piece of green tape on here with a sharpie line so I didn't draw on this brand new snowmobile with a sharpie. Then we're going to push on the bumper. The, the snowmobile right now is, is on the floor, on the concrete floor, so we've got a repeatable reference number. If it's up on dollies, that allows the front to scrub a little bit better, but depending on where the dolly is placed in the back, it'll have a dramatic effect on the loading. So we've got it right on the concrete floor. So we give it a couple of pushes to allow the carbides to settle and so that we have a repeatable reference number and then we measure straight down to the floor. So we've got approximately 463 millimeters uh, front bumper height. When we install the new Elka uh, Stage 4 shock absorbers, now we have a reference number. We'll adjust the preload on the shocks until we, we replicate this setup for, for best handling. Doesn't mean the handling is the ac absolute best, but now the rider will be just looking at and evaluating the shock absorbers and not accidentally evaluating a change we've made to the chassis. I've just got the uh, the OEM Fox shock here on the bench and the Elka's new stage 4 shock that we're going to install on the bench. And I always check center to center on the shock bolts during installation so that I confirm that the shock is exactly the same. The, the Fox float will vary its length because of the top out spring inside dependent on pressure. So sometimes it's a good idea to give it a little pull to make sure it's fully extended. Uh, then I check, check the measurements so that I'm not incurring uh, an unexpected ride height change that I didn't catch during the install. The, uh, the 137, 129, 141 uh, chassis all has a slightly different length ski shock so I'm just making sure that I've got the exact correct product and and we do. So we're going to do finish off the install now and move on to the skid. We just finished installing the two Elka Stage 4 ski shocks. We have the snowmobile off, off the ground, off the lift, so it's, it's hanging. And what I've done now is back the preload collar off until the springs just go loose and the collar is, is, is spinning freely and the, and the springs are free to spin. We call that zero installed preload. And I set the collar down and then I'm going to give it two full revolutions. The body pitch on the Elka shock absorber is a 1.5 millimeter. So two full revolutions is going to give us three millimeters of preload. And we find that that's a great starting point for a groomed trail rider. An off-trail rider, somebody that jumps a lot, um, not snow cross, but we're into a different level there, but uh, just a rider that plays, jumps, ditches, snow banks, that kind of thing, will put probably 8, 10, 12 millimeters of preload on there to give them some more ride height, some more travel, so that when they hit the ground, the, you've got more stroke there in the shocks to absorb the bumps. Uh, a sled that's taller with more ski preload will be prone to rolling on a flat groom trail. Not the shock, but the whole chassis of the snowmobile, the, the roll center, that, that kind of thing where the A-arms intersect with the weight of the engine. There's quite a, quite a lot that goes on in there. But the taller, the more preload we have on the ski shock, the chassis is going to be prone to rolling. Where with small amount of preload, anywhere from zero to three, four, five millimeters, the chassis will sit lower, sit flatter, and the snowmobile will be able to corner faster 
safer with less body roll.